Assalamu alaikum. Hello and welcome. I'm Farah Khalik and this is Selfie Chat with Farah, where we inspire personal growth by sharing diverse experiences that will positively charge mindsets to learn and appreciate oneself. In today's episode, I'm joined by Alia Qasim, who is curating a space of joy. She's a writer, she's a performer, a jewelry maker at Chanedo, and a samosa experimenter at Wow Eats. She is also the A in Lamb Sisterhood. Hello, Alia, and thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Farah. Thank you for having me. It's so lovely to start the day like this. Thank you so much. How are you doing? I am feeling calmer than I was about an hour ago. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad, that's amazing. So, okay, great, so I guess we can start and I would just quickly like to remind our viewers to subscribe to our channel and our listeners to follow this podcast wherever they're listening it from. And yeah, great. Um, Ali, I'd like you to briefly tell us um, about your space that you're curating of joy because that is that is what it is. It's, it's a space of joy. I just love your platforms, all of them. Oh, thank you so much. Father. Tell us a bit more about all the amazing stuff that you do. First, I have to ask, how are you? I am well, <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> I am great. I am great. I'm glad it's not so hot today. Yeah, and <laughs> the rains have come. Yeah. Hopefully, yes. inshallah. Um, you know, I just recently changed my Instagram <coughs> uh, uh, what's the word, the Instagram description to to that line, curating yeah. a space of joy. And I realized that that's really the thing that I am drawn to doing right now in this season of my life. Um, my Instagram is full of flowers and of the ocean and of the sky and it makes me so happy every time I go there. And I realized that, you know, over the last couple of years, things have been really difficult. And between, I mean, for everybody, between the pandemic, between, you know, the grief that's accompanied that, between just trying to survive in such tumultuous times. And the things that really helped me were these moments of beauty. Um, I would take walks with my mom, you know, every day and notice the flowers blooming and the flowers withering. Notice when the, you know, the bottle brush would fall. Notice when the hibiscuses would like fold into themselves and, and lay down on the street. And just taking like real comfort from the rhythms of nature and finding myself taking photos of that as a reminder and just help me kind of like gasping those little bits of beauty just helped me feel like I was alive. Um, and so now I do it with intention. And I hope that, you know, any way that I can offer joy, that if, if that's something I can do, I, I really am grateful for that. And let me tell you one fact, on your Twitter feed, I just love it whenever I open and I see a flower picture or a leaf and sometimes you take them so closely and try I literally enlarge the picture and I want to see it so nicely and I'm like so pretty it oh. just lifts you up it really does so you really are doing that you're you're you are curating a space of joy thank you I mean it's it's wonderful <coughs> how sometimes joy comes from the smallest things yes and we have to sometimes just remember that and it mm. takes like a little moment of just pausing, reflecting, you know, to remember that it's not always the big thing. Sometimes mm. it is the little moments. We take a lot for granted, Alia. We take a lot yeah. for granted. Yeah. We don't even stop for a moment to see that there's a flower blooming somewhere, you know, and, and that's beauty, that's natural beauty. And I think it's also because <laughs> the world demands so much of us. Mm. You know, it's hard. <coughs> Life is hard. It's it hard is. surviving in this capitalistic system. Mm. You know, it's, it's, I have, I, I feel a great deal of empathy for all of us because it is difficult. It is. Um, and so it's not always easy to remember. 
Um, and that's why I love flower Twitter, yes. you know, because we remind one another. Yes. You know? Just take a moment. Jacaranda propaganda season is upon us. <laughs> look right? up, look down, see the purple blooming everywhere. Yeah. Remember that life is more than mm. how productive you are or what society is demanding of you or what people think mm. or, you know, that it's also this. I love your thoughts. I love your thoughts. Thank you, Farah. <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful morning today. Um, so I want you to take us uh, back to right the moment that you woke up. How did your morning start? Mm. My morning started at 2 a.m. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when I opened my eyes and I think it was raining. And I was like, oh, yes, rain. I've been struggling to sleep through the night these days. My mm -hmm. brain doesn't always shut down. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I'll wake up at one, I'll wake up at two. And instead of fighting it now, I just sort of accept it and allow it and then go back to sleep again. Um, and then I, I set my alarm for six in the morning and it was like, again, it was sort of the little raindrops were falling and I just, just wanted to stay in bed for a little bit longer than I should. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna just stay in bed. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I had I'm trying to think like, I, I, you know, I live with my family. My brother had gone off to the gym. My mom was waking up. So it was one of those like quiet early mornings. Um. And then, I mean, gracefully, is that the word? Gracefully, the Nairobi traffic wasn't wild this morning. So, um, and I, I was listening to this really brilliant conversation around GMO seeds. Um, this, uh, I'm not sure exactly what she does, but her name is um, Claire Nasike. Mm -hmm. I think you can find her on Twitter at Miss Nasike. And she was talking about the impact of the GMO seeds and what that'll mean for farmers, what it means for food so sovereignty. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was just one of those conversations in which I felt really grateful that this work is being done and that, mm. you know, I'm learning something new. And, mm. and here I am. That's a very long story for how my morning was. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love how your morning was positive. And honestly, even I have been uh, struggling with sleep. Yeah. The, the mind just just refuses to shut down yeah yeah i don't know have you found any like so tricks? there's something else i've been trying actually i wanted to share it with you the moment you, you mentioned sleep i was like oh my god you should do this yeah <laughs> so there's this um breathing exercise um it's a breathing uh it basically uh, it helps to reduce anxiety and okay. it also helps you sleep so what you have to do is hold the four uh seven eight method mm -hmm. So you um, breathe in, counting to four seconds. So one, two, three, four, breathe in, hold it for seven seconds, and then breathe out through the mouth, through the mouth. eight seconds. Okay. Like really long, let okay. it out for eight. Just count till okay. eight. Okay. So you take one, two, three, four. Just let it out, let it out, let it out, and just do it twice or thrice. Yeah. I've been sleeping. It's been helping? <laughs> yes, I have slept, and I was like, whoa! I'm definitely you know? going to try that tonight, Hara. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes I forget, but yeah, the, the last night I forgot, <laughs> and I did <laughs> sleep well. But yes. I forget to exhale sometimes. Does that happen to you, like, literally? I mean, obviously I am exhaling because I'm still alive and I'm inhaling and exhaling, but I realize sometimes I've been holding my breath and, I, and then I have to be like, <sighs> remember to exhale. Yes. You know, it's, I mean. Yeah, we always say remember to breathe, remember to exhale. Yeah, yeah. That's so important. And also sometimes when you're, when you're also alone or just in your bed, you know, at night with your thoughts, instead of those thoughts, try to listen to your breath. Mm. I do that a lot. That helps. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm breathing. You know, that's huge. Mm. I always tell that that's huge. You're breathing. Exactly. Listen to it, and you know, I just try and sh um, feel how my chest goes up and down. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I, I sometimes I even put my hand on my stomach, just about the yeah. below the chest, and just feel it, and what I. Be in your body, I yeah. guess. Yeah. And then uh, somehow you just doze off. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I don't know if you find this, but life has, for me, has become so, um, what's the word, like in my head. Like a lot of my work is done in my head. So I forget to be in my body. And I think that's why I love performance. Mm -hmm. I love making jewelry. I love making samosas because it takes me out of this space that's small, that's just my brain and into the rest of my body, you know. Because um, I don't think we're supposed to live so much in our brains. Um, I, I read somewhere um, uh, it, it was uh, something about productivity. It was a productivity video. Uh, and he said, uh, your brain is not a place to hold things. Mm. Uh -huh. Your brain is not a place to hold oh, things. Thanks. It's a place for ideas. So, you know, um, sometimes it's creative, sometimes you feel I'm burnt out and you're like, I don't know, I can't think, it's because you're holding too much in your brain. Oh, wow. So if you remember something, write it down, put it down. Oh, my goodness. Write it down, and I do that a lot nowadays. I just, on my phone, my notes app is filled, and sometimes I'm like, what is this, what did I write? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and like, I stare at it, and I'm like, what is this? Because <laughs> I'm trying to remember what the hell was I thinking. Right. But yeah, I, I just take it out and I just type it out. That's it. It's out of my head. Hmm. Yeah. I'm definitely going to try that. And then it has also uh, helped me with remembering things now. Because yeah. I used to write, I, I'll remember, it's in my head, I'll remember. No, you will not. <laughs> <laughs> you will not remember. Right, right. Yeah. So yeah, it's really helped a lot, even in my productivity. So the past few months, I've really <clears throat> been on this uh, train, trying to improve myself productivity, you know, just yeah. do as much as I can, but do <coughs> important work, yeah. you know, not, not just, yeah, I'll be on, on my yeah. laptop the whole day, but yeah. what am I doing? I'm not creating anything, and I'm like, why are you wasting, you know, you're, you're, you're sad so much, yeah. so yeah, I, it's a step I've taken to improve myself. Yeah. It's the question <coughs> of, like, I ask myself often, like, what, am I want, what do I want to use my brain power for? Yes. Because it's so easy, if you're not intentional about it, to just... <clears throat> you know, yeah. like spend it like, ch -ch 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 -ch. Mm. and then the thing that you really, you know, want to invest in, you're operating at, you know, like 20, 30 percent. Yes. And you don't have what you want, what you need. What does it mean to you as an individual to relax? To relax? Yeah. <laughs> so one thing that I find I need to do regularly and by regularly, I mean really once a week, is I need to kind of earth myself. And by that, I mean be barefoot, on grass, ideally under a tree for at least half an hour. Um, and and, I, and, and my, what I love is to spend like maybe two, three hours under a tree just by myself. Um, and I find it just, it kind of grounds me. I'm a Capricorn, which is an earth sign. And so I think that it might be connected, but there's also a lot of studies that, that have come out around how, you know, being barefoot on grass is very uh, beneficial for your mental health, for your physical health. Um, it, I feel really supported by the earth, you know, and I have these conversations about like, you know, asking, asking the earth to kind of, you know, this is gonna sound so weird, but like really just taking taking the spillover of what I can't handle and supporting me. Um, and also just being by myself and just watching the clouds and watching the birds. So that's like my, my number one survival, like mm. to recharge for the next week. I know if I do that, I'm good. And if I've spent several weeks without doing that, I can really feel the impact. Mm. Um, and then I used to, this is, this is funny for us. So for a while I thought I was an introvert. And my mom was like, Alea, but when you were a child, you were so extroverted, you were so bubbly. <laughs> and people I meet are like, there's no way you're an introvert. And I was like, no, I really do need to, to spend time on my own. But I also think it's because I, I was in a season of... I think there's a word for it. Is it ambivert? Ambivert, yeah. possibly. That possibly I am an ambivert, but now I'm feeling much more extroverted. Okay. So I also find relaxation in hanging out with people, in dancing, in music. <coughs> but I think part of why I was introverted for those years is that I was in a season of 
where things were very heavy, right? So there was the pandemic. I was also one of the caregivers of my grandfather. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was ill for a long time. And, we, you know, I used to think dying is like a switch, you turn on and off. But I learned really with my grandparents, dying is a process. And so he was dying for two, three years. And, and we were in that space with him and taking care of him. And, you know, that took up a lot of space in the home. And so I didn't really have a lot of space for other things in my life, and none of us did. And so I retreated into myself, and that was where the introversion was coming from. Mm -hmm. Now that that's no longer there, I'm in a different season. I'm finding joy and relaxation in people's company. You know, I have more space for that in ways that I didn't before. That's beautiful. I feel like we, we, we all had those seasons where we are up and about, and we are full of energy. And then there are those seasons when you just feel like, I just want to be at home. I don't want to even see anyone. <laughs> right? And I think one of the big lessons for me is to honor the season you're in mm -hmm. and to also recognize the season. So if it was a season <coughs> of heaviness before, it may, that may not be the season you're in now. Don't carry the heaviness into this season. Mm -hmm. Like how do you sense and feel the season you're in in the moment and then honor it? That's a thing I'm always trying to do. Mm. What's an activity that you enjoy doing? I, it brings you pure enjoyment. I love to dance. I don't dance enough. When was the last time you danced? Uh, the last time I really danced? Uh -huh. Okay. The last time I danced was with my little nephew, me too. He, he, he's such a chaotic dancer. He's definitely not one of those children who you're like, oh, you dance so well. No, no. He's, dancing is a pure chaos. It's like, you know, twists and spins uh, in the air and like. Is it, is it Shani Hathor's dancing? It could be a little bit, yeah. It's, I don't know what it is, but I'm like, yeah, you're not one of those childhood. He's gonna, all over the place. <laughs> and he loves this song called Supanguinguing, I think it's called, something like that. Okay. Uh, it's like a Genghis tone song, I think. And um, oh, wow. so his dancing is very athletic. We wow. run around and like spin. And um, but the last time I really like enjoyed dancing was like, I think at the beginning of October, I was in. I was really lucky to be in Lamu for a writing retreat, and Blinky Bill was playing a set. Goodness, and I we danced for like hours. Farah, in the morning, the next day, my knees were literally creaking. Like, literally, I put my palm over my knee, straightened it, and I could feel... I shouldn't be laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't be it laughing. Yes, I know. I have 40-year-old knees now. <laughs> but it was so good, you know? Yeah. It was just like... And his, he's got such a gift. He feels... He can just feel the energy of people. He's like a... He's an energy shaper, I think. Oh, the music was so good. <laughs> yeah, that was the last time I really danced. Now that you mentioned it too, how was your childhood like? Oh, it was lovely, actually. It, I, live, I lived with... Uh, my dad is the eldest, son, eldest child in the family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we lived with a lot of extended family. Um, at one point, I think we were, oh, let me count, we were five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We were 12 people in one house. Oh, okay. Um, so you can imagine, you know, how hectic. And Sundays, people would just come home for lunch and then there would be popcorn and uh. then we would, you know, like play games. And it was just one long extended party every Sunday. Uh -huh. So there was a lot of joy, but also I'm the eldest child. So mm -hmm. there was a lot of like having to adjust mm -hmm. for the younger kids, you know, having to kind of tolerate. Tolerate was like the word, <laughs> you know, you have to be tolerant, Alea. Um, and I think I'm too tolerant now, to be honest. Uh -huh. I tolerate a lot of stuff that I really shouldn't. Mm -hmm. I'm, that's one of the things I'm trying to unlearn. But mostly it was, it was fun. Anyone memory that uh, always stands out when, yes. when someone mentions childhood? Yes. Um, and in fact, I think I, I think this is a story I wrote I hope about. it's hilarious. <laughs> it is, I mean, well, I think it's hilarious, but I wonder whether it's as funny for people listening. So we had, um, we had a little garden and we had this tree 
and we had just gotten a badminton set. And we were playing badminton and it was a Sunday afternoon and of course there was so many family members and you know the sun was starting to set and I think I must have been in primary school, I think I was six or seven years old and the shuttlecock got stuck on the tree. And so we were like, now how are we going to get the shuttlecock out? So someone took off their shoe and they threw the shoe into the tree. And the shoe got stuck in the tree. And then someone was like, oh, take off the other shoe. And then the other shoe got stuck in the tree. Someone was like, oh, take off, you know. So one by one, people were throwing things into the tree to try and dislodge the shuttlecock. And the tree just kept getting more and more items stuck on it until there was an, a whole bicycle stuck in the tree branches and the shuttlecock was still there. How? Oh, no. I mean, ridiculous. And the whole family was just like underneath the tree staring up being like, how the hell are we going to get the shuttlecock down? And of course, as a six-year-old, you're just like enchanted by this magical tree that seems to be capturing all these <laughs> items. And um, the next day, you know, when we went to school, the teacher was like, oh, can you write about a thing that you, you know, what your weekend was like? And so I wrote the story. And apparently when I, when I went, when I was picked up, the teacher told my mom, oh, your daughter has such a great sense of imagination. She wrote this whole story about a tree and bicycles. And my mom was just like, mm-hmm. I wish you knew. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I wish you knew. Oh my God, I love that. <clears throat> I love how you um, uh, imagine that she was taking everything. As a child, I was also the same. So, do you know how on the uh, stadium, yes. the roundabout, you can actually see the the the, the stadium lights, yes. right? The the, the the tall. Yes. Um, so what I used to think as a child, and this is very funny, <laughs> I used to think that was a giant monster's chair. Chair. Yeah, because it was like a chair. Yeah. Oh, there, there's someone so <sighs> huge who goes and sits up there. <sighs> That's so brilliant. I swear. Could you not? Were you frightened and or were you? No, I would always be frightened. That whoever fits there, I don't know. <laughs> you know? And then sometimes I would have like, this huge creature. So there was a lot of cartoon. So I'm like, I don't know, man. Must be not one of those 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 monsters both of girls need to come and get them, help us out with. You know? And I had all these imaginations. Yeah. I yeah. love that. I now I now I just want to write a a story about this giant chair. Just giant creature that sits on the chair over Nairo Stadium and like watches out right. over the city and like And I was like, Oh my god, why you are wow, what did you even think? So whenever I thought from there I always I like, just chuckle wow. to myself and like, Yeah. <laughs> I think that's one of the most beautiful things about childhood is everything takes on not everything, but a lot a lot of things take on this magical nature, you know, and you just go with it. Mm. You know, you don't hold yourself back. You don't restrain. You're just like, what if? And then maybe that. And then who knows? And next thing you know, you've just created a whole other world. Right. You know, that's often more interesting than the world that we live in now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and, and sometimes I, I, I try and, uh, you know, contemplate. I, I wonder how the youth today, the kids of today, how is their imagination? Because we were mostly outdoorsy kids, you know. We, we, we play out. We never knew how to play inside, you know. Yeah. Nowadays, everything is inside, you know. There's a screen on, in front of yeah. their faces from such a young age. And so I wonder. But then, yeah, I guess maybe now they're creative in yeah. the digital space. Yeah, I think so. And yeah. they find, like, you know, opportunities indoors, you know, shadows underneath the beds. Like, right. Right? Every space you're in as a child oh gosh, holds underneath promise. Underneath the bed. Oh, my goodness. Right? <laughs> Um, was there something you were most afraid of when, as a child? Something I had, it's strange, I mean it's a strange thing, but I had an irrational fear that <coughs> the ocean was going to come and swallow us huh. when we were down at the coast. Huh. We'd go down to the coast once a year and we'd go I think in August and the tides would be very strong. And I guess because I was so small and the waves were so big, I just had this fear that the waves would come and take us all away. Oh no. <laughs> now, of course that was limited to once a year, but it's, mm. and now I love the ocean. Right. And I, I always did, but I think it's a very powerful force. And even at that age, I was reminded by how powerful the water is mm. and how vulnerable we are 
in the yes. face of that. I, I used to wonder why this horse comes in front and goes back. Right? Like, why can't you just stay in front or just stay behind? Like, what is it? Yeah, yeah. I was so, yeah. I, the first time I saw the ocean was, I think I was a lot, I, I should be nine or ten years. Yeah. So, so that was a huge revelation. Right. Like, what is this thing? Like, a never ending swimming pool. Right, and then you it know? comes, and then it goes, and then it comes bigger, and then it goes. Yeah. Like, it's magical. <laughs> And, and I do not. Up to date, I do not swim in the ocean. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's quite um, scary. <laughs> Farah, let me tell you, if I could literally live inside the ocean, uh, I would. Really? Not on the beach, inside. Oh, yeah, when you see it in the movies, movies it looks pretty. But they are going to do it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really, uh, yeah. I think it's one of the. But it's a bucket list item, actually. Is it from yes. the ocean? Oh my goodness! It is. It is. So I think you have to find a place that's, find a place and a time that's gentle, mm. you know. And I think the ocean, like many other things, on Earth, like in the natural world, you. I mean, I find you just you have to respect it, you know. You have to be mindful and like conscious and like you know, like have a conversation with it and mm. like, you know, like a lot of, don't do that thing of like, which of course you wouldn't, but you know, do the thing of like being arrogant and like just entering any howly, mm. you know, it's, um, it's a relationship, Yeah. you know, and so if you are feeling like this is the first time and you need it to be gentle, you know, like, I think you it have can to create be, that for yeah. you. Yeah. I, and I think it's also cause, um, I had I don't really go to the ocean much, so I haven't been to my bus in years. Okay. Um, uh, near the ocean, yeah, really, in yeah. a long time. And <gasps> recently, I've been craving like I just oh. want to feel <gasps> the ocean air. Oh. And I, when I saw your pictures, I was like, oh, yes, I need this. Yeah, I really yes. hope you get to go <laughs> soon. Yeah. It's healing. It is. It yeah. is. Yeah. Subhanallah. I don't know how, but. Yeah. It is. It's somehow it is. Yeah. I, I also don't know how, but it really yeah. is. A quality about each of your parents that you admire? What a lovely question. How do I choose just one? I, I think of my mom and I just think my mom is such a rock star. She is just you know, whatever life throws her way, she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to make this work. You know, she just, she <coughs> takes it on, doesn't matter, you know, how old she is, doesn't matter if she's never done it before, she's just like, she's such a sport. I really admire that about her. And I really hope that that's something that I, you know, can also do. You know, life hasn't always... As with anybody in the world, mm. life isn't always easy, right? But the way that my mom takes life on, oh my goodness. It's really, really incredible. Quality about my father. My father, one of the things I really love about my father, especially as we were growing up, is he never treated us like, you know, when we were children, he never treated us as if what we had what our thoughts were or what we had to say were immaterial. We were t our, our opinions were taken very seriously right from when we were small. We'd all sit together on the table, children and adults. We'd have things that we would want to contribute about, you know, politics, about the country. Mm. about. And he always listened and he always took that very seriously and he always made me believe that what I had to say mattered. You know, and that's not common in it's not sort of my kind of setting no. you know as a kind of setting yeah. you know as a as a as a girl as a desi girl as a muslim desi girl you know like that is not necessarily the norm and it really gave me the confidence and the belief that what i have to say and to contribute in the world is has value um so i really am, i really i really uh, i'm so grateful for that a character trait about you that you love the most? Oh, 
Okay, as I think about that, should we have a little bit of this delicious cupcake? Yes. Okay. Um, for, the, for listeners who are not seeing, um, I'm currently, we're about to eat this delicious looking cupcake. <laughs> I mean, we've been staring at it for a long time. Yeah. It's chocolate and then it's got like this beautiful pink, like whipped frosting and then gold flakes and strawberries. Um, and I, it's taken a lot of discipline to not to eat not, it already. Uh, go so it down. I hope that you'll be okay with us taking a moment. I've already forgotten the question, Farah. <laughs> My mind just went into the cupcake. Mmm. Mmm. Really? Mmm. It's strawberry and chocolate. Oh. I really like that. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. It's moist. Ready? I'm a very uh -huh. noisy eater. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Mm. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to do that thing of like, if you're listening, take a moment and get something that you enjoy. <laughs> right? <laughs> get a cupcake, a cup of tea, like do a thing that feels good in this mm. moment, right? Right. Oh, wow. Mm. Okay. The question was, something about myself I like? A character trait. Character trait about myself. Mm. Mm. Wow, this is requiring a, like, a, a sort of self-reflection that I, you know what, I think a thing about me that I really like is I tend to say yes a lot. Uh, and sometimes it's a thing I've not liked about me because it just means my life is really full but it also means my life is really interesting because I just, yeah, I say yes a lot to all kinds of things. Mm. Um, and very rarely have I regretted saying yes. Mm -hmm. I really think where I am and the things that I've experienced in life are because I continuously say yes. It also means I'm tired a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and I think sometimes when you say yes, too much, then you're saying no to some things. Mm -hmm. So that's something I'm still navigating. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but that is, yeah, I think that is something I enjoy about myself. I, I, um, Ali, you just spoke my mind. I also say yes a lot. Yeah. And for me, it's like um, a way to not turn to please people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I instead of avoiding right. and uh, right. any you know um, altercation or something, yeah. I, I don't want to insult someone. Mm -hmm. You know, I just I just want to say yes because I, I and sometimes it comes from a place of fear mm. of missing out. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, yeah, I want to do it, and I know very well I cannot. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, like for example. Um, Someone will ask for a call at 4 or 5 p.m. And I know very well I'm not so active at that time. Right. Um, you know, the day has ended and I'm already at my lowest energy, you know. So I won't be thinking straight. And I still say, yes. yeah, yeah, sure, no problem, I'm free. And I'll be sitting there and I, I need to nap and now I have this call. And, you know, so now for me it's like, why do you do this to yourself, yeah. you know? And maybe that's part of the journey is learning what you want to say yes to for yes. yourself. <clears throat> I'm also a recovering people pleaser. It's such a, um, a journey, you know, trying to put yourself first yeah. and not in a, in a, in a like, um, I, you know, or egoistic way, but putting yourself first in order to protect and just mm. in order to hold yourself. Yeah. Put yourself first yeah. for yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, to do the stuff that you want to do and that will, you know, be of benefit or bring joy yeah. to you at least. Yeah. And that's something I'm, I'm, I've been navigating this year. Yeah. Because I've been like, oh, man, I can't, I, I don't know, I can't, I can't, there's nothing coming up in my head. But I'll still be beating myself up about not posting something. And so this year I told myself, it's 
fine. Right. You know, it's okay if you don't have the schedule. If it's okay if you don't have yeah. a calendar yet. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, that's the season you're in. Yeah. Flowers, like if you look at flowers, they're not constantly blooming, right? There's also like recovery. There's also like... You know, they need to be exactly yeah. the you know the soil needs to mm. be watered sunshine needs to come out like there's all these seasons before i mean imagine if it was just perpetual bloom no. it, i mean it just doesn't it doesn't work that way and that is something we forget about ourselves yeah. and again because we live in this system right. that is constantly demanding right like this idea of you have to be mm. always productive you have to mm. be always giving and if you're not you're not worthy yeah. you know like on to, you're, you're missing out on opportunity yeah. you know you'll miss out on on posting on that day and yeah. that the trend goes and that's it yeah. you know ah. it almost requires a great <coughs> amount of self-discipline yes. to withdraw from that and to say actually the thing i need right now is just stillness you know um but I think the other thing too is that it's, I find sometimes I need to withdraw to be able to hear my own voice. Especially if you are someone who, who navigates the social media world a lot. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of voices that can get really noisy. Yes. Sometimes I find I can lose my own voice. I can't hear you know, what, mm. what my spirit is saying to me. And then I have to retreat. Yeah. Oh my God. That's a whole other yeah, whole other episode. conversation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a whole other episode. What was um, a turning point in your life? Mm. I mean, I've had many turning points. Um, <clears throat> I guess I've been fortunate to have many turning points. Mm. May that always be the case, inshallah. Um, one that really comes to mind. It's funny. It's funny how you look back and you see the way things connect, you know, once you can look back on a thing. And it began, this specific turning point began when myself, Laura, and Mora were writing Brazen in 2018. And, you know, we were writing, we were uninvisibling the lives of extraordinary Kenyan women you know, as, as a way to kind of understand the lineage we came from, to draw strength from their ferocity, from, you know, their wisdom, mm. to learn their lives and not just the, you know, the, the superficial, like, you know, how normally like, Wangari Madai environmentalist. No, mm. we wanted to know like their betrayals and their, you know, anxieties and the complexities of their lives too. You know, we wanted it in technicolor. One of the women whose lives um, we were unearthing with Field Marshal Madani Wakirema. And the first time we went to go look for her, um, it was the three of us and uh, Gatia and Abu from Story Z2, of course, the masterminds between, behind Too Early for Birds. And uh, we were told uh, it, was on the, it was on the anniversary of, I think, Dedan Kimati's um, death, I think it might have been. And we were told, oh, you know, just climb these mountains, these hills, you know, turn left, go around the coffee plantation and you'll find her. So off we went. And we climbed hills and descended and climbed hills and descended. By the time we got there, I could feel my lungs. I could hear my lungs. So one of the things is that I used to be a very heavy smoker. I was a pack a day for many years. Wow. Um, and... I hadn't realized how much it had affected my lungs until that moment. And when I could hear it, I was like, oh my goodness, this is how bad it's gotten. And in the creation of the show, I think that was the moment I, that was when the seed was planted, Alea, you have to quit. You know, like you're too young for this to be what's happening. And then we went into the creation of the show. And I think Sitawa Namwali, who was playing one of the characters in the show asked each one of us to take on something that was brazen because the show was called brazen and i thought if i can quit smoking i can do anything in the world so i said i'm gonna i'm gonna quit smoking that's my brazen thing and i started and i went on the patch and then i wasn't successful mm -hmm. we staged brazen in 
July mm -hmm. in 2018. A year, oh goodness, I'm losing my timelines. Or was it 2019? Anyways, at some point, um, around then, my sister was pregnant with um, her firstborn, mm -hmm. uh, who we called Maka, because he was, at that time, he was like a little macadamia nut in her, in, inside her. And um, <coughs> one day, I just woke up and I was like, I already love this human being so much. I never want to have to ever step away from being with them in order to go have a cigarette. And so I returned and I said, I'm going to quit smoking. This is the thing. And I went on the patch and um, I am four years quit now. And I can spend hours with my little Mitu and no craving ever pulls me away from that moment. And it's been, it was really, really difficult. The quitting journey, people don't talk about just how difficult it is. For a year, I definitely went through kind of depressive episodes, mm -hmm. you know, um, and that's kind of what stops me from starting again is just how difficult it was to quit, you know, but oh my goodness, I am so, you know, I'm smoke free and I get to spend all this time with my little me too um, and, and him not associate the smell of cigarettes with his masi. That is so powerful. Was there a point at any time um, during the depressive episodes? Or do you, how, how is it that you felt? Did, how, yeah. how did your body feel like? You know, I haven't done enough research about this. But I mean, of course, I think there's, there's part of what nicotine does is it rewires your brain. Mm. Um, so you're not able to experience pleasure in the same way. Mm -hmm. Now when you quit, your brain isn't getting those hits and so it's not producing mm. whatever the pleasure hormone is mm -hmm. or chemical is. I, can't, I don't know if it's dopamine or it's serotonin, dopamine. one yeah. of those. Mm -hmm. So what happens is it's just not you're not experiencing pleasure in the same way. So chemically, it takes a while for your brain to rewire, mm. first of all. Second of all, you you build, a pa I built a pattern into my life. So, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of working, like mm -hmm. if, I, if I finished a piece, I finished writing a piece, you know, I would take a moment and I would go and have a cigarette. Mm -hmm. And that would mark my full stop. If I needed to think about something, I'd go and I'd have a cigarette. So now these moments were now, they were like kind of vacuums. I had to create new things. Mm -hmm. And actually one of the things I started doing, I forgot to say is, because my fingers would, my hands would get so fidgety, I started making jewelry. So especially with brass wire, I started twisting and bending and making kind of jewelry with wire as a way to kind of keep my hands busy. Um, mostly I just was like, take it one day at a time and mm -hmm. one breath at a time. Mm -hmm. And just ha f with the faith that it would be, I would get through it mm -hmm. and that the journey was worth it. And sometimes it was really hard. And I would just say, like, all you need to do Alea, is just one breath. Just get through this breath and then get through the next breath and then get through the next breath. And I, and I really tried to be patient with myself, you know, and have grace um, and, and just be like, the, you're doing a big thing. Recognize this is a big thing. If other areas in your life fall apart, it's OK. You're doing a big thing, <laughs> you know, and I to just that. have patience. Yeah. I love that. That is so important. Um, I, I feel like oh, in whatever you do in life, if you don't speak to yourself first yeah. and set your mind, you know, you don't tell yourself, we are doing this like me this morning. I told a uh, student in front of the leader and I'm like, we have to keep it together until evening. Yeah. We'll do this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, telling my body, we have to keep it together till evening. We have to do this. And yeah. It, the mind just, is powerful. Yeah, you just get into that mode then. Yeah. And you know, we can do, th we can do, s at least my, my experience has been, we can do so much more than we think we can. Yes. You know, and then once you know that about yourself, hmm. you can't unknow it. Yes. You know, it's just reminding yourself hmm. and constantly building those memories of doing those things so yeah. that it's not so distant, mm. you know, so do things that frighten you regularly, mm -hmm. 
so that the fear is familiar and not unfamiliar. I love that. Yeah. Are you, generally speaking, when you look into the mirror, do you love what you see? <laughs> oh my goodness, now I do. I don't always. So I'm blessed with one of those bodies that is very responsive. So what that means is when I'm happy and joyful, you can see it on my face. But when I'm not, you can also see that on my face. Mm. When I take care of myself, you can see it. You can see it. When I don't, you can see it. Right? I'm like. So in one, in one, on one way, in, on one hand, I'm like, how wonderful it is to have a body that is so responsive to the environment. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I'm like, goodness. You know, like the slightest bit of stress and my face is just puffy and like... <laughs> but I've learned to love what looks mm -hmm. back the, at me. All the, all the uh, yeah. types and kinds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. But, and also like, I think it's natural to not always love what looks back at you. I think that's okay too. I think it's okay to also, sometimes Farah, I look at myself and I can see I can see what life has done to me and is doing to me and I feel sad mm. and I grieve a little bit, mm. you know, because I can see that I've had a tough time and I think it's okay to be like, oh, Pole Alea, like I'm really sorry I put, this, put you through this and I can see in your eyes and I can see that it's been tough mm. and I'm sorry. That's beautiful. Yeah, we don't always uh, love what we see. But you, you, you always remind yourself that there's something to love there. Yeah. There's always something. Yeah, exactly. exactly. We just don't see it. Yeah. We, we focus so much on, oh my God, look how my nose is. But yeah. hey, have you seen your eyes? They're yeah. amazing, yeah, you know. Exactly. So I always tell myself, you got the best eyes, yeah. girl. Your eyes are mesmerizing, <laughs> Farah. They're so beautiful. Thank you so much. Very uh, expressive. Really? Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. So I've been having this um, uh, consciousness about my voice a lot in the past two years. And it also came since I joined the clubhouse. Okay. So I was like, oh my God, uh, I don't know how I sound like, you know. <laughs> I you think imagine? everyone feels like that though. About <coughs> Does anybody like the way they sound? <laughs> Have you ever asked anybody? Really? Yeah, I really don't think Oh my God, I'm not alone. Yeah, no, no. I think, I, I, I almost think that there's <coughs> like, some science behind why you don't like the sound of your own voice. Right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Oh my god. Uh, wow. If you had a chance to do something again, but differently, what would you do and why? I would not start smoking. That's easy. Mm. I think it's done a lot of damage to my body. I think it's held me back from experiencing the world. Mm -hmm. I used to be very athletic. And then when I started smoking and it became harder, I retreated in some ways. Mm. Um, yeah, I wouldn't start. That's the, that's the most definitive one. Everything else, I think, you know, I've had a lot of things, a lot of, like anybody in the world, a lot of failures in life, right? And those have made me who I am. But that one, I think that was avoidable. What was your greatest achievement? My greatest achievement, being me in a world that is constantly trying to turn you into something else. That is so hard. So hard. It's a constant journey. Mm. Yeah. And a battle within. Yeah. That totally. is very hard. Yeah. Because you want to fit in, but you also want you to stand out. And then you don't want to miss out on stuff. Yeah. And then you're fearing judging, judgments. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a battle. And it's only one that you can face by yourself. And yes. only you know deep inside really who you are. So it's not even really a journey that can be taken on, you know, with the world, so to speak. Mm -mm. Sometimes people will tell you some things and they will, in a certain way, remind you of who yeah. you are and that is also true. important that's so true and in fact i think one of the greatest gifts is to surround yourself with people who remind you who you are yes. and to also remind other people mm. i've had you know 
uh, I think that's such a it's a such a great act of sisterhood very specifically mm. you know and I'll do that sometimes someone once someone beloved once sent me an email many years ago and said I want you I want to remind you who you are and I will look back on that email when I'm faltering and I've sent emails to other people with the same intention so that because there's something tangible about words on a page mm. that are a little bit more concrete a little bit more reliable than words in your head you know and so yeah it's a gift when someone sees you i am also this uh, person who loves to you know um checking on people and uh, <clears throat> sometimes i feel like i think i'm going to scare everyone away because i'm so you know like, hi how are you how was your day like you know and um, sometimes my mom is like uh, i think you need to slow down <laughs> It also comes from a place um, of not having trends for a very long time. Mm. So now when I'm making trends, I go all in, you know. Right, I, yeah. I give my all. That's so beautiful. Yeah. Like, why hold back? Hmm. Right? Yeah. I, 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 do, I love you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, so we, uh, let's do a small here now. Okay. Um, <clears throat> never have I ever. Oh I'm goodness. Sure okay. 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 So very fast. Okay. Um, never have I ever gone to a party I wasn't invited to. So 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 do I respond with? How do I respond to that? Like. Okay. Let's let's do this. We have a cup cake in front of you. Okay. If you have, just take a take bite. Take a bite. Okay, okay. Got it. Okay. Got it. Never have I ever gone to a party I wasn't invited to. Mm-hmm. Oh gosh. I'm taking a bite. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and actually do you want the story of that yes, the one that comes please, to mind? Of course. So it's very specifically my sister's bachelorette party. Uh-huh. And we had the thing of like <clears throat> tasks that she had to accomplish. And we ended up, oh my goodness, it was like two o'clock in the morning, this you know, gaggle of like drunken girls gate crashing this corporate event. I think it was like an airline event and she uh, it was it was very chaotic but it was so fun i need the whole story <laughs> i'm going to ask I you i can later. never i can never that's as far as <laughs> that's as much as i can tell <laughs> wow that was must have been a night <gasps> it was a night it was a night oh my yeah. How? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I feel like i wish i was there in the day <laughs> never have i ever left an unfinished written piece Oh goodness. We don't have enough cupcakes for oh, that. God. It's more than one bite. I literally need to like eat all the cupcakes in this room. I tried so hard to find something for a writer. Mm, and that was the best. It, this one just came up in my head. I'm like, she must have written something, left something. I have a whole graveyard of unfinished pieces. Oh god. And I, I don't know, is it me? Tell God I'm not alone. I've now accepted. Yeah. For a long time. <coughs> I really struggled with the need to finish. Mm -hmm. And I I do understand how important it is to finish work, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. very easy to get stuck in a perpetual thing of like in draft stage or getting stuck in revision and never releasing it into the world. Mm -hmm. Um and also I've accepted that some pieces did what they came to do. Mm -hmm. which was help me understand how to write a certain thing and they mm -hmm. don't need to go out into the world for them to to be valid they did what they needed to do mm -hmm. do you know what i mean did they stay in your head yeah they constantly did they disturb you uh no i have too many other things that are in process to disturb me the other thing far that i did that really helped me with unwritten pieces mm -hmm. is i tend to look at the world I, every year i take on a word that i would like to experience my following year with so i do this tool called the year year compass which mm -hmm. helps you close out your year and imagine what your next year is going to be like mm -hmm. and my word for 2019 was flow mm -hmm. because i found i was getting too caught up in my head about my writing and i wasn't releasing it into the world i was getting stuck Yeah. So I said flow is how I'm going to experience 2019. Mm -hmm. And my plan is I'm just going to write, release, write, release, write, release. Mm -hmm. And so on Instagram, if you scroll down far enough, you'll find these. Every day I would post a picture and then I would 
write a micro fiction piece. Oh. Right? So like a story. Mm. But it can they only... They're called atomic essays. Oh, they're called atomic essays. Yes. So I call them cachanados. Ah, oh, uh, Like small cachanados. Yeah. And it did two things. One, it challenged me to look around the world for interesting photos. Mm -hmm. So I was always like observing around me and like trying to find where stories lived visually. Mm -hmm. And then number two, I couldn't spend a lot of time on it. So it meant that I had to dig into my imagination, write a thing, not edit, just release it. Mm. And the practice of that meant that it, I got stronger in my process of writing and releasing mm -hmm. and it became easier as I went along. Now I have all these like glorious little stories that mm. I'll go back to and I'm like, oh, these were really lovely. And, yeah. and it helped me get out of my head, you know. So I, yeah. anyone who's struggling with that, find a thing that helps you in the process. I am struggling with that. <laughs> <laughs> I just raised my hand. Wow, thank you so much. I am definitely going to try. Yeah. I've been reading about atomic essays and uh, they, they, they essentially do help you, you know, okay. get into the mojo of writing. Yeah. So it really helps you. So what, what the problem with me is I'm just stuck. I am just stuck. So one of the things that helps me is you just, you do a stream of consciousness writing. And if you don't want to type, I mean, ideally you should handwrite or type. Mm -hmm. if, if you're struggling with that, you can also just speak. And you challenge yourself five minutes or 10 minutes, okay? If you can't think of what to write, you say, I can't think of what to write, I can't think of what to write, I can't think of what to write. But pen to paper, fingers to keyboard, mouth to air, you're 10 minutes. Mm. And you'll find actually along the way, it's like warming up your writing muscle and you'll discover things that you might find actually want to write about or helps you like clear your throat almost, you know? SubhanAllah. <laughs> well, you just mentioned what I have been doing lately. I've been journaling uh, with the voice notes. Yeah. Okay. So I just, even in the morning when I just wake up and there's so many thoughts in my head, yeah. I just start the voice note. So and then. I'm like, all right, so this is how I'm feeling. And later on when I listen to it, sometimes there's a tear in my eye because oh. I listen to my thoughts and I'm like, wow. But I noticed I, I feel so much better because it's out, yeah. it's out of the system. Yeah. You know, it's out of the system. Yeah. Have you heard of, I mean, of morning pages? Yes. Right? Yes. So for a while I did morning pages and you know, Farah, what really struck me? I was like, wow, Alea, you're really mean to yourself. <laughs> like, I couldn't, I would look, I would write and I'd look back and I'd be like, kind of shocked at how self-critical and yes. how cruel my inner voice was to myself. I wrote a couple of journal entries and I'm like, and I hold that to them and I'm just telling myself, you need to do this a lot, you need to do that. You know, that's the tone. Yeah. My tone is just like, I am struggling with this. I need to work on myself. Yeah. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. I read that and I felt so bad. And I'm like, oh, you're doing this to yourself, Farah. And then once you know, <clears throat> you can choose to do differently. Yes, right? definitely. Yeah. So I'm on that journey now. I'm on a self-discovery journey. And yeah. it's an exciting journey, but it's also scary. It is. It's difficult. Mm. Yeah. It is. All right. So never have I ever lied using a fake profile on social media. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Is Aren't we all, by the way? <laughs> we all had the Elias my profile. My first ever blog, uh -huh. which nobody knows about, was a, a, a false profile. And I don't even know if I can find it. Any, I don't even know if it's still on the internet. Oh, wow. <laughs> we need to go back. We need to search out. We should find it out. <laughs> K.O.T. Investigate. Yes. Oh, we need to hand this shit over to them. <laughs> that was, I think, in 2014, 2015. Oh, that was a long, a long time. time ago. No, before that. Before uh, that, because I think, oh, yeah, it was way before that. Oh, I was wow. still married at that time. Never have I ever used a dating app. Oh! <laughs> I just, I'm I taking love a this. bite. I just, I just got onto the dating apps. I was oh, wow. encouraged by a friend of mine and I have, I'm, and I enjoyed it. I mean, oh, I had some good luck recently. 
I had I went on some really crappy, boring dates. Uh huh. But I also met someone that you know I, I who I've whose company I've really enjoyed. You know. Twitter people will know them as the romancer. The romancer. Um, I love those tweets. I always <laughs> like, oh, this is an update. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Uh, someone said to me, a, a, a really good friend of mine said to me a couple of weeks ago that he stopped measuring the success of relationships by longevity. Mm -hmm. You know, and that kind of blew my mind a little bit because oh. that's always been, even though I wasn't aware of it, that's always been how I've seen successful relationships as mm -hmm. something that's like long-standing and I've released that and I'm like uh, one of the challenges in in this whatever this arrangement is mm -hmm. is to be in the moment and to take one day at a time mm. and to not force it to be a thing that maybe it isn't so I really have I have really no idea where it's going or what's happening and that's really challenging for me as a Capricorn who really is I'm like wow I'm a control freak um, but it's also delightful. Mm. Yeah. I love it. I love mm. it for you. Thank you. I love <laughs> it for you. All right. Um, so, Alia, what's your life's philosophy? Hmm. Wow, Farah. That is really a deep question. I think of the word kindness. I don't know if I can, I don't know, because here's the thing about writers, or let me just say, here's the thing about me. I want to, I want to like have a beautiful sentence that sums it all up. Um, and I don't have one. <laughs> I have some words that help me navigate the world. One of them is kindness. One of them is beauty. I really feel like one of the things I've been told that I do is heal through beauty. I think that if you can in some way and in some form contribute your you-ness to the spaces around you, to the world, in a way that makes it a little bit better, then you've succeeded in life. And I think sometimes that's hard because society doesn't always recognize that mm. and isn't always built to help you do that. And yet, I think that whether it's recognized or not, you can, that's the challenge, is how do you do it despite whether mm. the world sees it. I don't know if this is making sense. It is. It's beautiful. And it's so important. And you know, I'll also say I think <clears throat> philosophies can change. Mm. So I think if you ask me again in maybe even in a year mm. or five years, I might have a different answer. You know, I might have discovered something about life or mm. discovered something about how I'm moving or, you know, that, that will make, that will uh, affect this. This, yeah. But this is such an important thing that you just mentioned. Yeah. Kindness is so critical. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Um so Ali you're in a in a in a supermarket. Okay. And all of a sudden you have this power to see a wing shell mm -hmm. on top of everyone. So you see me and the wing scale up mm -hmm. on my head, mm -hmm. an invisible one. What would you like it to measure? What do, what do you want to see? Oh my goodness, what a question! That's your superpower. Oh so what my do you want goodness! To see? <laughs> what Other than anything? One thing. I, you know, I kind of, I think, I think where my mind is going, I don't feel like I have the right to see. Uh huh. Something, it's a simple power. Something so intimate of somebody. Do you know what I mean? 
let's say um, okay. maybe a character trait. I know I'm getting too deep say. about this. Yeah. This is supposed to be a light question. <laughs> uh, okay, I would like to weigh uh, how many f Fs you have released to the world that day. Oh. Am I allowed to swear? Yes, yes. How many fucks you released to the world oh. today? That's the weight I want to see. I think. I don't know. I'm overthinking that's the question. I'm overthinking the question, Farah. <laughs> I'm trying to find something that's perfect. I'm going to go with that. If you were to choose a character trait. A like, character trait. Yeah. <clears throat> like there's a label on my head. That's my character. What label do you I want mean, to see? I mean, maybe. What character? I'm kind of interested in this idea of brazenness. Mm. Right? Like, like what it. Because I'm also interested in. Like, in exploring what it is to be brazen. One of the things that the podcast Cabrazen has really uh, gifted us is expanding, stretching, and exploring what it means to be brazen beyond this idea of maybe what one might traditionally think of it. So I think maybe that's what I would like to see. Yeah, that would be amazing. I hear the <gasps> That is such an amazing person, right. you know. <laughs> and you wouldn't, because it's not something that you necessarily see on the outside. Yeah, you don't. Right? You don't. Yeah. That's the uh, one. Yeah. Cancel the early one. one. <laughs> we'll edit that out. <laughs> no, we won't. No, we won't. Actually, <laughs> I love both answers, though. So, um, I want you, us to do a short quiz. Okay. It's called the Kokoloji quiz it's a japanese quiz okay um it's a japanese study of the mind okay Kokoloji. um so there are five questions and um, scenarios and okay. i'll give you uh, multiple choices so you just have to tell me which one resonates the most okay all right so mm -hmm. number one <clears throat> you are reading stuff in the living room while someone is knocking on your door through the cat's eye you see a stranger According to the way he dresses, this guy must be a technician. What kind of technician is that? A. An electrician. D. A plumber. C. Air conditioner electrician. D. Television or stereo te technician. B. Plumber. Okay. So we remember that. Plumber. All right, uh, number two, the guy, uh, you are a superstar about to release a new album. What do you want for the album cover? A, a beautiful landscape. D, cartoonish picture. C, abstract picture, some artistic stuff. Or D, a picture of yourself. D. D. Yeah. Why did I know that? <laughs> <laughs> I even have the precise image. Wow! And it's like this really awkward looking picture of me when I was 11 years old and like this baggy t-shirt, baggy, baggy uh, men's shirt at Nyayo Stadium during paddle cart. <laughs> That's the one. Wow! Alright, uh, the third question. Your boss told you to cut a piece of paper into half. How do you, how do you like to cut it? So A, cut it in straight, cut it in a wavy line, cut it zigzag, or cut it in one curve line? A, I think. Straight? Mm. Okay, so you hold it and exactly. you cut it nicely, yeah, 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 yeah. precisely. Yeah. Nice, okay. Um, if you have Okay, it's, it, this is a slightly dark question, but the meaning is, is not so, it's, it's quite the opposite. If you have to commit suicide, which way will you prefer? A. Shoot yourself. D. Overdose. C. Hang yourself. Or D. Jump off the building. Oh my goodness. I think B. D. Overdose. Okay. Um, which part of the cake are you eager to get at first, you know? Um, A, the strawberry part. B, the uneatable decoration part. The sugar decoration part. D, the chocolate part. Or E, the decorating wafer. Mm. 
D, I think. The wafer? No, sorry, the chocolate. The chocolate. Mm. Okay. D. Oh, sorry. My mistake. The chocolate. All right. Hi. <clears throat> Are you ready for the answer? Yeah. I'm so <laughs> curious. All right. <clears throat> so the first question was um, the other technician, right? And we mm -hmm. chose a plumber. Mm -hmm. So the first question stands for the th problem in your family that you try to ignore if you choose. Mm -hmm. So if you chose, uh, so <laughs> you had chosen the plumber, right? Which is D. Understanding, feeling within the family. Feeling. Yeah, understanding. Goodness. Okay. That's yeah, the problem. Okay. You're trying to ignore. Okay. All okay. right. Uh, number two oh my was. Goodness. That's deep. The superstar, right? Mm. The album cover, and you chose D. So this this question stands for how you see yourself in most as the most charming attitude in yourself, and would like to express it to everyone to oh. see. So you chose D. You you have a high self ex, self. Confidence and love to be a leader. Oh, yeah. Is that true? I, in some ways, yeah. In some I ways, so. yeah. yeah. But you do have a good, uh, high self confidence level. I think so, yeah. yeah. I've, wor I, I've worked, yeah, I do, I do. Yeah. Yeah. And you are a leader. Ali. Yeah. You are. Yeah, I accept. Yes. Um, so number three was the bosses at the paper, cutting the paper, you chose A. This question stands for the method you will choose to end your relationship with someone. <laughs> <laughs> so A was, you can end it right away, no regret. Oh, that's it's, not true. That's not true? I linger. It's a problem. <laughs> Are I you that longer. ex? Yeah, I linger longer than I should. Uh -huh. I don't know. I have a hard time committing, but once I've committed, I have a hard time disengaging. I'm one of those people, it takes me a while to jump in, but once I've jumped in, it's really hard for me to get back out again. Mm. Yeah. So I think the straight line would mean that uh, once it's over, I think it's, it's really over. It's really over, over. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, maybe. Mm. So number four was the dark question, and you chose D. This question stands for how you manage your money. Mm. And you said... Overdose. Mm -hmm. He said, so you're a businessman and know how to earn a money from anything you want. Wow. Uh, that's and that's true. Now it's true. It uh, wasn't always true. Uh-huh. Now it is. Now it is. One of the things that I that is really wonderful to discover at this point in my life is, yes, I can find many ways of earning a living. Amazing. Wow. Wow. All right. And the last one was the cake one. And you chose the chocolate part, which was the... So this question stands for your attitude. So that means you are reasonable and a natural born leader. You love to be in control. Oh, yeah, I do love to be in control. I never realized that until recently, but yes. Oh, wow. That's oh my God. illuminating. Isn't it? Have you done it for yourself? Uh, no. <laughs> no <I do. laughs> now you know the answer. Now I know the answer, oh, that's no. why. <laughs> Uh, but I think these these, these um, questions really do yeah. have some meanings behind them. Yeah, and they help you really think about <clears throat> things that otherwise maybe you wouldn't, right? No. <sighs> of course, now my brain is stuck on all the answers. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's been lovely chatting with you, Alia. Likewise, Farah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Such a beautiful way to start the day. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad. It was, uh, it was an amazing few And hours. you are a fabulous interviewer. <laughs> Thank you. It's like, no, it didn't feel like an interview. This was just a, like a really beautiful conversation. Thank you. Um, I, I really wanted it to be that. I wanted her to just chat and hang out and enjoy each yeah. other's company. I really, I really did. Thank you so much, Vara. Amazing. Thank you for tuning in and watching this episode of The Self Hair Chat with Vara. This episode was not sponsored, but it would be. <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode and would love to support us, please do, sh do so. You can do that by sharing this episode on social media, leaving a rating or a review down below. You can also uh, 
check me on my coffee page and yeah i guess uh, this has been it remember guys love you always